I just didn't. Hello. Hi, Matt. Hey, good morning, everyone. Justin, um, I will only be able to attend for like 15, 20 minutes and then my plane is boarding, but I will kind of chill as long as I can. Okay, cool. I also didn't really have very many topics. Um, maybe to continue the bi discussion if we get someone that's not dano um <laughs> but other than that not too much i think we I, I have this is just a general note is that i'm going to follow up with hyperledger on the funding of the ci uh like next week consensus is funding will not run out but we'll have to basically we're going to use the excess credits by or the ex excess credits expire in march so i'll be sorting out on my side what to do between the expiration date, which is like mid-March and the enablement of withdrawals, which is probably a couple of weeks after that. Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. All right, good morning, everyone. I don't think there's too much of a set agenda today. Does anyone have any items they'd like to discuss off the cuff? I mean, for my side, not really. I mean, no, like just say that we're getting two, two developers up and running, like you met Nisha last time, right? And, and George as well. And I was hoping to have them on this call, but. It's Valentine's, so they were busy. So yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> no problem there. Yeah, no. Um, please, yeah. As they keep getting up to speed, definitely keep or take advantage of the Discord uh, and and ask as many questions as needed. We definitely love to get those folks up to speed. Uh, yeah, Gary, you wanted to chat about releases. I yeah, agree that I that's on, a great topic. <laughs> yeah, I was on PTO, so I, I'm still trying to catch up on the traffic about 22.10.4 and uh, RC2. So uh, just a quick recap would be helpful. Yeah, so, uh, you know, 22.10.4, we think we're going to scrub in general to focus on 23.10. I don't know if that changed yesterday. I was out as well for the day off. Um, so, you know, Kareem... What, and Amezian and some others were working on a last, we had a, a pretty large regression that made it into Maine last week uh, around the get balance fix, Gary, that you had put in. So we sorted that out by reverting that fix. And I think Kareem had some, uh, you know, uh, there's another approach to finish fix get balance in the layered world state issue, but I can let Kareem discuss that more kind of after this. But I think our plan was to focus on um, 23.1 and potentially still cut 22.10.4, but we think that since we're getting close to the Sepolia fork and some other stuff, that it doesn't really make sense to put out two releases, especially when one is becoming somewhat mandatory um, going forward for mainnet. So we, that was kind of where we landed, potentially just scrubbing 10.4 uh, to focus on the quarterly, since folks will have to update to test on Sepolia and to run any of the Shanghai-related stuff on mainnet anyway. Uh, and if I misrepresented that based on new info, what <laughs> that that would be good to know. But yeah, I think Kareem has the most recent status. Yeah, just regarding the issue. So at the beginning, they decided to refer to the Gary's PR to 
to fix the layer wall state issue, but uh, still having the get balance equals to zero. So with Amazian, we worked uh, yesterday in order to find a fix, and we we found a fix. So so in the last PR, we are merged uh, with Amazian. So the get balance is okay, and uh, we don't have any more the layered wall state issue uh, regarding the PR of carry. So uh, the, just uh, the issue was uh, was related to the method uh, we are using before. Uh, it was impacting the try log persistence. So so we we had a lot of trouble to find the reason, but no, it's okay. Um, yes. So I can I can explain more, but uh, if you will have all of the description if you want uh, in the PR if you are interesting. Yeah, I, I I reviewed the PR yesterday and and uh, got the gist of of what the the problem was with the layered world state. So yeah, that's great. Um, so it sounds like we're just going to do a twenty three dot one dot zero RC two. I think we've already burned an RC two, and we're going to burn a potentially a third one with this fix. The only intention was to cherry pick at this fix into the next RC and then release with nothing else. Okay. So yeah, we, we can't really delay the quarterly anymore. Uh, so just fixing the last get balance stuff, test that again, and then put out the quarterly. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna cut a 2310 final and burn that in and then release it. Yeah, let's get some thorough reviews on Kareem's PR, but that was, I believe, a good plan forward. And then hopefully we can get something out around the latter half of the week. Uh, and in an extreme case, we can release early next week, but would prefer to avoid that. So the to, for timing on the Sapolia fork, um, it's next month. It's we need to have a uh, client release ready on Monday for the EF blog. We can use a develop image or like a spe special pre-release image if we want to. Um, I'll have to check with Simon on what the specific status of the Shanghai components are because I know not all of them are merged into main. So we probably might we might cut a twenty three one one kind of pre release image just specifically for that and let people know not to use it. Um, you know, people people will probably still pick it up for some reason or another. But I think that that was going to be the plan and not bother with trying to rush something out in Maine for uh, next Monday that was not ready. Okay. Um, Cool. So that's the release. Um, regarding kind of a follow up from the last contributor call, I've written up basically notes on what we decided as far as the grant proposals and things from last week. I'll share that out sometime in the contributor channel this week uh, and put up a wiki page so that we can have a process in place to start pursuing grants. It's pretty much in line with what we discussed uh, last week where we if it's a retroactive grant, we determine, you know, basically on a case by case basis how to divvy up the funds, um, probably just among all the contributors, frankly, if, if that's what the scope of the grant is. And then going forward, it's based, it's pursuant to who is doing the work for the grant and the, the work split therein. So just basically making use of splitter contracts like we're already doing today, uh, and then um, letting the grantor be adjudicator in any, you know, kind of failover mode that we might need. So I'll share that proposal. Probably just tomorrow. I just need to clean up the text. It's very short uh, for some agreement. Uh, we did pass the first round of the optimism retroactive kind of grant funding. So I might just continue on in that process. And since it's retroactive and, you know, all of the contributors worked on the grant, I would basically just be inclined to split it evenly along the lines of the contributors and set up another splitter contract like we've done with the CIP. Um, just among you know the main maintainers of the code base, and then tie that to whatever organization overhead we need to, or any other thing. So if we need like a swirled address or a different address or just a maintainer, this is an example. But you know, I'll put more information on that because uh, the grant needs to go in next week. But it's very straightforward. It's like twelve hundred words, so it's not going to be much. I'll send out something for everyone to review um, if they want, and if not, we'll just kind of keep pushing that process along with input and transparency at each point in the contributors channel. Cool, cool, cool. Um, okay, so we discussed the release. 
Uh, we discuss grants. Do we want, I don't think we necessarily need to continue the DI discussion right now. We didn't really make much progress. Justin, I know you were toying with some of those notions. Anything to share on the DI or modularity front? That's I pertinent. Can, um, I've been updating the wiki quite a bit. Uh, I'm kind of trying to form a little bit more concrete plans and, and um, thoughts around the things that we've been discussing and pushing around. So I will share those links in Discord. Um, ongoing process, obviously, always welcome contributions from everyone else. Yeah, uh, Christian, this might be a good per point to get some of your team's perspective regarding kind of modularity and, you know, kind of carving out some of those private network components, uh, just yeah. as a thought. Uh, so if maybe Justin, we can, uh, to reshare those links in the contributor channel so that everyone could take a look because I think it'll be most pertinent to you know the unique kind of use cases that we're trying to support across a number of network types. Yeah, that works for me. I mean, uh, share it there, and I'll, I'll bring it up uh, in in my stand-up meeting tomorrow morning as well. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Um, Regarding, yeah, so so Dana, one thing we discussed before you joined was um, I'm going to be following up with Hyperledger around the CI funding uh, in like nowish because the consensus extra credits that we have on our CI account that are currently funding this stuff will be running out in mid March or expiring rather. So we're going to be pursuing additional CSI funding for that. But at the same time, I'm going to follow up with uh, HLF to make sure that everything is in line to start using the CIP funds as soon as withdrawals are gone through. Sounds good. Cool. Any other topics um, from the group? On the next contributor call, I'd like, I'm going to walk through basically some notional roadmap stuff and try to talk through what that looks like. But for now, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm at an airport and I don't think it's a use, good use of time currently, but. <laughs> Any other topics? I know, Dano, you came off mute there. Do we want to create some uh, new rules uh, in order to avoid some regression or to to add more step, uh, more test? I don't know, just to talk about that, if someone wants to change something or not. I'm sorry, what was the question? I'm... I was juggling some stuff. Ah, sorry. No, I just wanted to know if we want to add more to change your way to test the PR before merging or something like that in order to avoid um, the regression. If we can, maybe it's not every time possible to, to detect all of the regression, but do you think we need to modify something uh, to avoid this kind of regression? Because it seems that we had uh, sometimes uh, a lot of regression, so maybe we need to change something. Depends on the scope and what the regressions are in. I mean, how big is the test we would need to run to find the regression? We don't want to run a full three-day burden for every PR. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was thinking maybe something like if uh, someone is modifying uh, the sync part, maybe testing just a, a checkpoint sync or snap sync and if someone is modifying the i don't know the evm it can run or not during one days or two days I, I don't know i'm trying to to check if we need to only trust the reference and unit test or if we need to run a node sometimes to validate the pr it seems sometimes it's complex to reproduce all of the use case with only unit test or reference test. It seems that sometimes we need to run a, a node or something like that. Right. For example, the recent regression with um, the KZGs doing a memory leak. I mean, that was there's no unit test to get that because we're yeah. not going to stand up a test for six hours. 
Yeah, just something like that. Yeah, if we if we need maybe before merging a peer just to run another during one day or something. It maybe it will slow down the 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 process before merging a PR, but maybe it will uh, add more protection or something like that. And to push maybe the log or something like that to the PR, like that the people can check the log and maybe find something. I, I don't know. I think we can invest more time in uh, in the nightlies. The, the nightly uh, nodes used to be a little higher value, and uh, I, don't, I don't think that they're. I don't think we're making good use of them right now. I think that instead of uh, you know blocking merges of PRs, uh, we can we could invest more time in the nightlies and discover things on the on the nightly process, and then just come back and do some bisection if we find issues. But just, I, I also just... agree if we have if we have big changes, maybe we should just raise the bar. Uh, for for merging those uh, on a case by case basis, I, I like nightly, but sometimes uh, I think sometimes it's too late uh, because uh, if you are if someone is pushing something with a regression in the in the main branch, so you will detect that maybe in the nightly one days later, and the other people will merge this main branch in their branch as they will think that the issue is coming from their code. So maybe we can lose sometimes because of that. But I don't. I would prefer to detect that before merging in main, but maybe it's not possible uh, because uh, the tests are complex. But. but this also runs counter to the desire for smaller PRs. Smaller PRs are easier to review, and the more friction you put in a submission, the longer it takes, the PR sizes grow. And then you're, as a standard practice, getting these monster 10,000 line PRs that are hard to merge and have huge impact on other submissions. Um, it's a tricky balance between keeping development going, keeping contributions open, getting good quality reviews and finding regressions. Um, we don't want to move too far to like, you know, shut down external contributions is because we want to run a test for six hours before we submit anything. Hmm. And then there's the cost of running these tests on every PR. Um, that's going to cost even more CI or whatever system we run it on. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, there's got to be some kind of middle ground, right, between these two. I, I mean, I agree absolutely with Dano. Maybe the the goal is to kind of chunk out the PRs into smaller components, test more easily with our existing test kind of apparatus, or is that not necessarily useful? Um, but a lot of the problem is, is that a lot of these PRs that are especially intended to fix these regressions or bugs have to touch a ton of different stuff. I don't know, maybe to Kareem's point, we just kind of talk about specific modules. Like if, if you're impacting the bonsai code, maybe there's a more thorough review process or just air, more kind of error prone or complex areas of the code base. I don't know if that's had, there's an appetite for that at all, because it would put more review overhead, which is something we might want to do anyway instead of you know adding more testing processes we'll just add more review more thorough review processes it's kind of more than a glance over we thought about this before with specific code owners but we didn't necessarily move anywhere with that proposal i think i'm always going to prefer more testing over better reviews i think that's a very subjective and very difficult um, solution So in light of that, I think we do have lots of really good, we have a, we have a wide variety of scopes to our testing. Um, so we have unit tests, we have systems integration tests, we have one-offs, we have burn-ins, we have more systemic tests. I mean, maybe we just kind of need to put a little bit more thought into the tests that we write and which level that they are at um, and kind of bake that into sort of the design process for when we, when we work on a PR. Any thoughts on that? 
I, I think that uh, a lot of times our PRs uh, lack a little bit of uh, lack of lack of context in the description. I think that uh, uploading artifacts and uh, the, the test methodology of that's that you might have used for like local burn-ins or things like that might also might be might be handy just uh, for other people trying to review complex code as well. And yes, sometimes just uh, sharing in the PR the log of a node running this PR can also help sometimes to discover an issue or something like that because sometimes maybe the the reviewer will find an issue just regarding the logs or I don't know. You can maybe miss something or. I don't know if you will find a, a solution today, but it was just to discuss about that. Yeah. We want to move on. Sure, unless there's any more comments. Any other topics from the group? Have we um, have we abandoned the approach of uh, a forked RocksDB, or did we just kind of kick that can down the road for a future release? I asked uh, the RocksDB developer, they said that normally it will be in the next release and I it will be the 8.0. And I think maybe it will be available maybe at the end of the month or the next month, because it seems they are managing several releases at the same time. So uh, I checked the old release, the the different moment when they decided to release and it seems that maybe it will be the end of the month or the next month i'm not sure but i think it's not too long to wait for the next release okay i, I noticed that they had a 7.10 already that was unreleased in the 7. the 7.9 series was unreleased so i thought it was going to be longer than that but, but it yeah. seems they, they are doing several releases at the same time. They can do 7.9.10 and at the same time uh, releasing 8.0. I, I checked and uh, every time they are doing several releases at the same time. So, Okay, cool. Do we want to have a backup plan in case it's not released within the next month or so? It's a pretty significant upgrade to get out. I guess the backup plan would be to just continue to try to do the fourth release, which seemed to be a pain. Yeah, I think the worst thing about the release is that it, it requires, the tooling that they've got requires builds of multiple architectures that have to be uh, joined back together into a single artifact and i think that that was kind of the line that we drew in the sand of if we can't just build using the the tooling that they have in the repo uh, directly that we didn't really want to commit to kind of a franken build process but i think we can have that in our back pocket if for some reason this gets delayed too long okay that's fine with me let's see if we'll revisit this in like two weeks at the end of February, but I'd like to try to have it out this quarter. So maybe if we need to mess or, you know, do something shenanigans, we can. All right, any other topics? Well, I think we can hand back the half hour. Um, one thing I'd like to discuss, uh, the, uh, 
I did a couple of commits to the EVM tool um, that are under review for T8N and B11R. And I just, one of the things that um, I'm also experimenting with is GraalVM, um, getting support for that. And I want to know what the appetite for some of these more broad-based changes are that might be required to support GraalVM. Um, one of them is to move away from using the Java security services and just instantiating our encryption directly. I mean, as it stands, we're specifying a provider and a specific algorithm. So the Java security stuff is just strictly overhead that presents reflection issues in GraalVM. Um, another one is moving um, all references to Log4j into a very few classes and making sure that um, we can run without it effectively um, because GraalVM hates Log4j for some reason. And um, what was the other? There's another small cleanup that needed to go across the systems. But what's the appetite for getting some of those um, more broad based? Oh, yeah, upgrading Bouncy Castle. We're about two versions behind on Bouncy Castle. Um, and it's also, I've noticed that all our dependent library stuff coming out of Teku as well is still two versions behind. The reason is they changed their artifact name from dash. Uh, um, JDK 15 on, no, JDK 14 on to JDK 18 on. They changed one of the names. Um, so our auto dependency checks don't catch it anymore because we have the most recent version of that artifact because they changed the name on us. Um, is that something that we probably should look at after uh, the merge? Uh, not after the merge, after Shanghai. Um, what's, what's the appetite? You know, some things are small, they can be broken out. But what's what's the perception on on the, the the appetite for the rest of the team for sporting changes like this? Daniel, could you elaborate a little bit more on like the upside of of using Grawl? So not shifting everything to Grawl. This is entirely uh, an exercise done for the command line tools. So I think uh, performance wise, using the existing uh, hotspot compiler is for something that you're going to leave up for days on end is the correct choice because you'll get better performance. But when it comes from integrating uh, Besu into testing processes, like having Besu um, produce some of the reference tests. Um, and so we needed to create the TNN and the B11R tools to support that, which my existing PR there adds to the, the EVM tool. Um, but to support the, um, these tests, they want to start up and run these consecutively, start it up, run it, shut it down, start it, run it, shut it down. Um, for uh, one of the test tools, there was an accommodation made to stream it um, for the for the fuzzing, uh, Marius got it to, to stream in some of the fuzzing stuff for for the state tests. Um, but that's you know going to be a harder lift for the uh, execution specs tests. That's a new repo that's spinning up that looks to be the primary way that new tests for reference tests are going to be showing up. And when I did my uh, Graal VM work, it took down an eight minute run down to about ten seconds, and all of that is almost entirely in startup time and pre-compiled calculations. Um, none of these tests were exercising the EVF for performance reasons. They were executing correctness questions. You know, I give this transaction, what's the result? Shut it down, move on. So the startup was just, you know, you know, 90% of your 95% of your run was was stuck in, in startup services, and then 5% of your run was the actual processing, and then it shut down and bring it back up at 50 because it's probably even worse than that. It was like 98%. So um these changes, for the most part, that would be need to be done to support a Graal compilation of EVM tool seem to be fairly benign, but they are fairly broad changing, like the log4j support, uh, moving that all behind the SLF4j, but keeping it for, I want to emphasize, I'm not recommending changing anything for the regular runtime. And this would just be for um, making it so the Graal VM can compile it. And that way we would have two supports. So maybe we could experiment with trying a Graal VM node, but I, almost guarantee you the performance isn't going to be as exciting as we would hope. So those were some of the things I was looking at and wanted to get feedback on before I went too far down that rabbit hole. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of agree with the notion that like all those things that we're going to do are not bad anyway, you know, like upgrading Bouncy Castle, definitely need to do that. Log4j stuff, sure, you know, get away from that specific interface. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that I have an appetite for that. Okay. Are we going to get rid of the uh, retest eth subcommand along with that if we've got a, a T8N tool that we can use to run the, the reference tests? Uh, once we have it running, I would imagine we would. Um, we could, you know, because Geth doesn't like running it, um, despite, you know, the fact that, that Dimitri really, really wants it. But the new testing, the, the people putting new spec tests together, they're kind of competing with the testing group. I don't know who's going to win that battle. 
It's going to be a fun popcorn match to watch. Um, they're completely ignoring the retest at the APIs and focusing entirely on T8N, V11R, and maybe T9N. Um, and they're probably going to get another, you know, T9N is a transaction validation, T8N is transition, V11R is block builder, and I expect we're going to probably get another one in the mix for code validation when EOF ships in either Cancun or Prague. So getting these command line tools working in performant, um, because Nethermind doesn't have support for this, and it would, you know, increase our, our story that we, you know, we participate in the standards making process because we also have um, standards compliance specifications um, about the same time GET does, so we could use it for differential testing a lot easier when when spec problems come up. Yeah, sounds great. I, I think one of the things that I did notice with the reference test suite that we have uh, versus the uh, uh, the retest ETH tool, not not the sub command, but the retest ETH tool, uh, it tends to be a bit more strict, not a bit more, a lot more strict. Like we can pass our own reference test suites and miserably fail uh, on the retest ETH uh, tool. So it would, I think it would be beneficial to uh, be able to directly use the the retest ETH uh, as 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 part of our reference test pipeline. Yeah, I think retest ETH. Uh, the issue there is I think there's some parallelism issues. We still have some static fields that are cross-contaminating across different forks. So you get one of those running at the same time. And then when you're running parallel in the same VM, just load issues. Uh, with T8N, there's there's no such concern because you own the entire process. Sounds great. The Growl VM changes that is, of course. Okay, so I'll, once I, uh, there's a little issue on Hedera I need to I'll work with. Once I get through that, I'll start going down that path again and getting PRs ready for the smaller changes. Um, I did post the, uh, the, the, um, the giant, just for, for just for uh, posterity in case I, I forgot it and never came back to it, of all the changes that, that make the Graal VM work currently with, GA, with the EVM tool. Um, so I'll break those out in the smaller ones and get those going probably with the random going, it's going to be after ETH Denver. That sounds great. You you don't anticipate any other kind of runtime improvements, just kind of the testing apparatus. Um, in the short short horizon, that's that's what my plan is. I have a lot of. I have a long list of performance improvements that we need to do, like moving away from the um, cache changes into a journal change list for, you know, the, there's a lot of internal EVM performance improvements that I need to do, but as far as external facing, it should, the only thing that you should know is it should be faster, have less, less exploitable configurations. And the exploits are like all, nothing's worse than a Kachak by the book. So that's my standard for, is it an exploit or not? is doing this, is it worse than doing a, a large Kachak? And if it's not, then it's not an exploit because there's better ways to waste your gas. That sounds right. Um, Amezian, did you do any looking at GraalVM? I don't know, as I recall, we explored it at least a little bit on kind of the main performance track. Yes, um, I, actually I'm, I'm testing currently different implementations. So, uh, um, so I, I, I'm running different nodes on OpenGDK, OpenG9, uh, Zulu, and uh, and GraalVM. Uh, so I already uh, uh, have the um, the sync metrics. So um, I, I mean it's quite similar. So the the, the sync times are, are are very close. The 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 block import time is very close. Um, yeah, so nothing like to ex to exploit from that, but um, uh, so after sync, I had some issues uh, because we I, I had all the nodes uh, uh, with corrupted database because of the last regression. So I had to I had just to to, to sync from scratch, and um, uh, so now all the nodes are are running, and uh, I'm 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 analyzing different metrics and. Uh, uh, yeah, we. It seems that we have like different uh, block processing time with different uh, implementations. 
but I have to dig in and uh, yeah, understand what's um, I mean, what's going on and how like what's uh, why let's say why uh, Graal VM is uh, faster than another implementation. I, I totally understand Danu's um, uh, use case as Graal VM is known to be uh, very fast at startup. This is like the first use case uh, known about Graal VM. If you have if you want like a GVM with a fast startup, just choose Graal VM. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 currently testing different implementations, and um, um, yeah, I I will share the results. Uh, okay, so I should probably clarify. I'm using Graal VM AOT compilation versus the Graal VM as a dynamic compilation source. And I, I ran that years ago and came to some of the same conclusion. It wasn't exciting enough to push it to go down the rabbit hole, add other things I needed to chase. Um, it was a little bit better, but not like spectacularly better. Um, but that's when using Graal VM as a dynamic hotspot style compiler, just in time compiler. Um, the work I was doing for, for the EVM tool was static compilation to compile it down to like a 30 megabyte binary that you'd run on the CLI, completely disconnected from all dynamic JVM environments. And that, when I say that Graal VM is going to have performance issues, that's where we're going to have the performance issues because all the compilation is done ahead of time and there's a whole lot of optimizations. It can't figure out from the burn-in of what's being used quickly and what's not being used quickly. So um, when I when I said Graal VM and my stuff, I was specifically mentioning the Graal VM um, ahead of time compilation modules. Um, so the dynamic Graal VM has some good stuff. It also has some some weak stuff. It's it's it. it Picking a, a, a VM to run is, is tricky because you win some things, you lose some things. Okay. Yeah, no, we can, I think, yeah, we picked up on that too, but would be interesting to see the second round of results, how it goes and what, if possible, makes sense to combine. Anyway, cool, that'll be good. I'm as the end, feel free, please definitely share those metrics when we have them in Discord. Yeah, sure. Any other topics, folks? Great. I will, uh, yeah, share these notes out after the call at some point today. Happy Valentine's Day to all. Uh, please enjoy the rest of your weeks, and we'll see you all on Discord. See y'all. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Right.